Okay, so here's a, a valuable uh, place for us to learn. Look at this is a this is a list of topics that were lost in a recent assessment, and uh, the first one I already did a video for and tagged it or linked it to that topic. So when you go to do that topic, if you look in the explanation in the instructor resources, you'll see a video from me that explains it. I don't have one for this yet. That's what we're doing here now. Predicting the strength of intermolecular forces from an electrostatic potential map. All right. So wow, big word. I already clicked on it and I already prepared uh, my whiteboard for it. So it looks like this. Let's come over here. It looks like this. All right. Most of the or molecules of four imaginary substances are sketched in a table below. Each sketch is, is uh, shaded to show. Uh, where am I here? Just me here. To show the electrostatic potential at the surface of the molecule. That means how strong the, the electron density is. Rank, rank these substances in decreasing order of the strength of the intermolecular forces between them. In other words, choose one next to the substance in which the molecules exert the strongest intermolecular forces with each other, and choose two next to the substance in which the molecules exert the second strongest intermolecular forces uh, with each other, and so on. Okay, so. That's the instructions. Let me come over here and get rid of the instructions and bring out the table. Looks like this, okay? So when you see something like this, you see, let me make a, oops, gotta say here. Let me make a note about this one. This is a polar, it's a polar molecule, right? Because you've got a minus over here and a plus over here, do you see that? This is a nonpolar molecule. This is nonpolar. And this is actually nonpolar, right? Can you see why? This is nonpolar because the pluses cancel each other. You see that? And the minuses cancel each other. Okay? So there's regions of polarity here, but it's it's overall a nonpolar molecule, okay? So the, the first, let, let's consider the, the intermolecular forces that we have. We've got dipole, dipole, and we've got dispersion forces, right? Dispersion, okay? And it turns out dispersion extremely weak, but if that's all you, if there's no dipole here, of course there's also hydrogen bonding and ion interactions, okay? But these are these are all neutral molecules. So there's no ions and there's no hydrogen bonding. I think the instructions say, let's go back and look at that. Note all the molecules are neutral and you may assume none of them experience hydrogen bonding, okay? So there's no ions and no hydrogen bonding, right? So it's dispersion or dipole-dipole. Well, dispersion is extremely weak. Um, dipole, dipole is strong. Dispersion is weak. I'm making that small circle around there, okay? So the weakest is going to be the smallest dispersion force because there's not enough area for the electrons to be dispersed over, okay? So this is the weakest. I think we're supposed to put a four next to the weakest, okay? The strongest is the polar molecule. That's a one. And the second weakest is going to be here because it's just dispersion. That's going to be three. And this, of course, is the one that's left. Two. Okay. All right. Hope that's helpful.